Hey everyone, welcome back. If you're new here, hi, I'm Sir Wade. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably already seen the little Santa animation thing that I posted a couple days ago. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, well, if you have my Instagram, go follow me. Today we're gonna do a few things. Uh, for one, I wanna show you kind of a breakdown of how this was made. The knitted texture effect thing is actually a tutorial I followed from Skillshare, and Skillshare is sponsoring today's video. So, hey, thank you Skillshare, we'll talk about that later. But I wanted to break down the animation and the sound design and just some of the little things and choices that went into making that, some stuff that you can apply in your own work. But before we dive into that, very quickly, I just wanted to share something. For quite a while, months maybe, maybe like a year, I've been like, struggling with making stuff. Nothing serious, nothing big, but like I realized that I haven't really been making anything for me just for fun, creatively, just to learn and get better at stuff. Like VFX and animation, I don't do nearly as much of them as I'd like, and so I'm not improving as fast as I'd like. So this was just a little something that I wanted to make in a day just for fun, just to, she is all kinds of crazy right now. Cause I always used to follow tutorials, open a piece of software, I used to just make stuff for fun. And I kind of missed that. This was just a little something to make and post and it was fun. But I thought I'd share that with you just in case you are in a similar spot, in case you find yourself only doing creative stuff because it's a school assignment or it's work. Allocate some time for yourself this week to just be creative, to make something fun. That's literally what I did. I was like, I'm gonna spend the next four or five hours making something. So I did. Now on to the Santa animation. I actually had no idea what I was gonna make. I just knew I wanted to post something on Instagram. So I knew like the aspect ratio. But aside from that, I didn't really have any ideas. So I went straight to tutorials because it's been a while. So I actually went to Skillshare.com. And if you haven't watched my other videos where I've talked about Skillshare, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes across tons of disciplines, whether it's animation, motion design, motion graphics, business, photography, illustration, cooking. There's just a ton of stuff on there. So if it's a creative thing you're after or a business thing or social media or whatever, there's a lot of classes, workshops, tutorials, there's a whole bunch of stuff, and all of it's included in their membership platform, which I think is less than $10 per month if you get the year thing. So it's actually very affordable and full of a lot of really nice professional stuff. And if you haven't already signed up for Skillshare, there's a link down below that you can get two months for free to watch whatever you want. So this is actually the tutorial that I watched to make the Santa thing. I watched this little trailer to get an idea of what it was, and it's basically this procedural effect that you can feed anything into, image, animation, video, whatever you want, and it'll convert it into a knit sweater look. And I figured let's follow the tutorial and then at some point I'll figure out what I actually wanna make with it. So that's exactly what I did. So jumping over to After Effects, this is what I used to make it. On the left, you can see the knit sweater thing. And on the right is the animation that I made to feed into it. So the first thing I actually did is I fed in this picture of Luna and me, just because I thought it was funny and cute. And I, I used that to create the tutorial, just to kind of get the thread thing working. And what's cool is you can actually change like the resolution of the yarn. So I fed this into it, and then I tried a few other images just to try stuff. This is a transformer thing we made on Twitch. And then I put this planet thing I made for another video through it just to see what that looked like. And then eventually I was like, ah, oh, I guess I'll do something holiday themed because that would make sense. And then I jumped over to Photoshop and I drew this little test Santa. So test Santa ends up translating from right to left here. I didn't like the white outline. It makes it kind of hard to tell what's going on. It wasn't very clear. So I went back to Photoshop and I made the new Santa. I wasn't sure what I'd be animating, so I just drew everything separately in case I wanted to puppet it around. I gave him a separate bag, and I did draw kind of a more round version of the bag that I figured if he ends up picking the bag up off the floor, it needs to go from being flat to being round. Originally, I tried him with eyes, but I didn't like the way that translated. And then I tried a different, few different color schemes until finally, this one at the bottom right corner became uh, the main Santa that I'd be using. So this is the sleigh. This is all one layer, and then these things are separate. And I actually had to do quite a bit of tweaking because when you look at the knit conversion, uh, these horizontal and vertical lines sometimes will land right in between where the little Vs go. So you lose that line, which is why this one is the winner as long as you don't move it to a weird spot. So with all the assets made, I brought them all into After Effects. I basically just parented the arm layers to the body, the head to the body, the legs to the body. I just made kind of a basic rig that I could just puppet the character around and keyframe all his animation. And another really big decision that I made pretty early on is I hated having the smooth motion. It just felt very computerized. It really felt like I was just feeding animation into a filter and then it was just converting it. And I wanted something a little bit more charming than that. So I decided to go step key and have them kind of pop from frame to frame or from pose to pose. That way it gave a more kind of stop motion feeling that you could be looking at multiple kind of knitted sheets of fabric versus just a computerized texture. 
Next up came the shapes. I decided to put just white shapes everywhere because I wanted it to feel like snow. So I added these little lines that became trees, these little shapes that became snowflakes. And then I traced those poinsettia, poinsettia flower things, and then just added other little shapes around to just populate that lower section. I stuck my name at the top and I figured that was probably good for everything except the main Santa area, which felt kind of dead because it didn't have like snow or anything like that. So I figured I should probably, when the sleigh goes off, show snow sputtering off the back so that we could actually see the motion is motivated by something. The little snow particles were pretty straightforward. I just used the free CC particle world effect that's built into After Effects, just a particle emitter. And I just set them to bubbles because once they transfer, they look like rice which means snow in this case. The trick here is that even though I allowed the particles to move on every frame, so they're, they are moving on ones, they're only being emitted on the frames where the sleigh is actually moving. So on its kind of stepped keys, the particles are showing up and that felt more natural to the style of motion that I had going for Santa and his sleigh. When it was just emitting on every frame, it just looked like too much. Now, as far as animation goes, there are a few little things that I added in very specifically. Uh, for example, the sleigh, if you zoom in, you'll see it is hovering a little bit above the snow. Uh, the reason I left it like that, A, I thought it was a little bit better for separation so you could actually read the sleigh above the snow. But then when Santa jumps in the sleigh, it gave me the opportunity to have the sleigh kind of dig down into the snow to show his weight, which doesn't happen when the bag falls in. The bag comes in and then he jumps in and that's what causes the sleigh to fall and then he can drive. Speaking of the bag, you can see here that he's got a flat bag. And then when he lifts it up, it rounds out at the bottom. That's that second drawing that I added in before. And I decided that when he went to throw the bag, he would, he would lift it up, look at where he was gonna throw, drop it down to anticipate the action, and then chuck it up in the air. And then when the bag does hit the, the sleigh, it kind of settles. So you can see how it has a few extra frames of comes in, squishes, and then retracts. Uh, for like bending the knees and stuff, that is just like puppet tool. It allows you to add points to manipulate any layer that you have in After Effects. So this is how you could, you know, animate wiggle on the hat if you need to, or you could use it in this case just to correct some of where these little color spots are. So if you don't like what you're getting, you can kind of shift it around. The only thing left is the final bit of snow that shows up at the end once he's jumping into the sleigh. That's just kind of in the background. Um, because I had the Merry Christmas fade in on ones and Santa was already leaving, and the snow particles were also on ones, I figured that I could allow the main snow to also just animate on ones. I didn't need to do any kind of stepped stuff. And you could just as easily continue using the free uh, CC particle world that's in After Effects. I actually chose to use Red Giant's Trapcode Particular instead. The main reason is because they have this whole editor built in with a ton of presets. So it saved me a lot of time just to click on the snow, change a few parameters and hit go versus trying to make it myself, which probably saved me like 10, 15 minutes. Red Giant's tools are like the best for most things. So if you're trying to make your own 3D particles, this is the one I would recommend. Now at this point, I thought I was pretty much done, but the fun part for me was just starting. I decided that I should put some music under it, some just little holiday music, just kind of in the background. But then I thought, you know, maybe I should put like jingle bells or something, just like the actual bells jingling, just something to light in the background, maybe some wind, like a little icy, like Arctic wind or something. So then I started just pulling out sounds. I have a library of sound effects that I've been using for a while. Um, for example, I have an Arctic wind sound. It sounds like this. It's actually from Peter McKinnon's sound pack. So this is him making these sounds with his face. And uh, I actually really like this sound. So I went ahead and I put it in. And then I thought, well, why stop there? Maybe I should do little footsteps for Santa. So I went and downloaded a bunch of different sounds from Jingle Bells, motorcycle sounds, people falling on the ground, snow sounds bell sounds. I have a link to where I got my music, which is the same place I got my sound effects. They have music and sound effects, so links below. Well, let me show you how the sound design went. First, I started with the Arctic wind, which doesn't really do a whole lot. So I took the snow sounds, which a lot of them are pretty long, like it's a long sound. So I just cut it into a lot of pieces, rearranged it so it didn't sound like one consistent piece, and spread all those pieces out. That way it's just like, like this. Then I thought, why stop there? Maybe Santa has jingle bells in his shoes or maybe they're on his coat. So I put these bell sounds in the gaps between the snow sounds. So when you combine the snow and the bells, you get this. Which I think paired with the little staccato feet moving is really, really nice. It kind of complements the style. And I mentioned before that he lifts up the bag, puts it down for the anticipation and then throws it, right? So I wanted to make sure that that red, so I put a sound effect just for that little backdrop. 
which to me feels very Minecraft or like 8-bit Atari, which is perfect for this like yarn animation, followed by the sound of the bag hitting the sleigh. But then I thought, okay, well, maybe that has a bell in it too, so I also added this. It gives a more whimsical quality to the bag. Maybe there's something magical in there. Maybe there's something fun. So when you combine those sounds, which I thought was a lot more charming. We have Santa jumping into his sleigh, so I added three sounds for that. The first is actually a snow crunch, and that is to signify Santa hitting the sleigh and pushing the sleigh down into the snow. I also paired that with the motorcycle kick and the motorcycle starting and driving away. And I also put in jingle bells. So if we add all of these things together, And all the sound design was pretty much accidental. I didn't go into this thinking I was gonna do any sound effects at all until I got to the end and I was like, ah, I'll put one thing and oh, maybe this, ooh, and maybe that, oh, and this could be fun if like maybe there's something in the bag. And it just became this little fun character exercise of like, who is Santa? Like, what does he have in the bag? Like, what do his footsteps sound like? How does this style of animation sound? So I actually didn't like blend any of the sounds together for the most part. I just chopped them up and let them be really quick and sharp because the animation is quick and sharp. So the sound actually ended up being my favorite part of the entire process, just because it was a blast to do. And I was really satisfied playing it back the first time being like, oh my gosh, like that was great. Like that's so much better than if I hadn't have put sound or if I just put some like music in the background. And so to bring this back to the original tutorial that I followed, it did mention like you could use animation, but there wasn't really any of this other stuff, like how to do the animation and how to add sound, like all that's, stuff I've learned separately. There are other tutorials you could watch or just things you could experiment on your own. The thing I wanna point out is if you do follow a tutorial, and I've been following tutorials for years, like I love tutorials. If you follow a tutorial, don't just copy it verbatim and then leave it at that. You should try to do something a little bit different either during the tutorial or do the tutorial and then go apply it to something different afterwards so that you can actually show that you learned it and not for like show someone else, but show yourself that you learned it and do something cool with it that you can show to people and be like, hey, look what I made. And people don't go, oh, that's that tutorial. They go, oh, that's fun. That's kind of like that tutorial. But that's the key. It's kind of like it. To have your own spin on it, to put some of yourself and your own creativity into what you make, that way you're not just copying what someone else is doing and not really getting much out of it. So if you want to make your own knit animation thing, I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's not hard at all. And if you want to follow the same tutorial that I watched, there's a link down below for two months free of Skillshare. You can go watch that exact same tutorial. You can knock it out in like 10 minutes. You can also watch the video on two times speed. So if you're comfortable in After Effects, I just watched it double speed and I was done way faster. My After Effects project file will be available on my Patreon, link down below. So for those of you who are considering supporting the channel, who like what I'm doing here, you're learning a lot, and you want to be a part of the decisions going forward, the stuff we're doing in 2020, or if you just want to support what we're doing here on the channel, uh, that's one of the perks of Patreon is that you can download the project files like this. And don't forget that if you have questions on this kind of thing, we have an amazing Discord community with like two or 3,000 people in there. We're also interested in animation and art and illustration and all these different skill sets. But if you do choose to make something with a knit animation, definitely tag me on social media, Twitter, Instagram, wherever you post it. I'd love to see it and share it. But as always, thank you so much for watching this entire video all the way to the end. And if you're watching this in mid to late December, enjoy the Christmas break if you've got one. Remember that the calories don't count until the new year. That's a fact, scientific fact. Anyways, thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.